If I'm gonna take one over x to infinity, yeah, this is we're starting right now. So we're just uh, we're reviewing what we talked about yesterday. If I want to take this to infinity, your question is how come it equals zero, right? How come this just equals zero? Well, let's uh, let's analyze this numerically. Well, if I had um, one over two, and then the next thing I would plug in is one over three, and then the next thing would be one over four, the next thing would be one over five. What's happening to these numbers successively? Like it's getting smaller, right? I mean, one fifth is smaller than one half. And if I keep going, if I go, you know, one over a hundred, and then one over a hundred and one, you guys can see, oh yeah, that keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller, right? Mm -hmm. Well, um, will this number ever be negative? This number on the bottom is increasing, right? But it will never be a negative number. So, so it gets really, 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 really small until finally at infinity it goes to zero. Does that make sense? So this eventually is just zero. Now that's weird to us because we can't conceptually picture infinity because we're finite. Okay? We die eventually. Um, <laughs> until you know like unless you know you believe in uh, your your spirit which is eternal uh, but we're not gonna get that right now that's theory okay so it goes to zero now that's numerically let's look at this graphically if I were to graph 1 over x do you guys remember what 1 over x looks like there it is and then boom there it is again hey no that's fine that's, don't worry about it. okay um, so look at this as I go to infinity on this graph, what is this going towards? What is my curve, my graph, my function, what is it going towards? It's getting closer and closer to infinity because you guys know that there's a horizontal asymptote right here. You know it's never going to cross y equals zero, but you know it's going to approach it. So this is why if you have a den denominator that has a variable on the bottom of it, only a variable, and it approaches um, um, only a variable on the denominator, as it approaches infinity, it gets a zero. So when we look at the, uh, the other problem we were looking at, when you want to get rid of variables, you just need to make them on the bottom of a fraction. Is it, okay, so let me, let me take that to this concept right here, to this guy right here. Now, he looks nasty because he has some fraction exponents. All right? So let's, uh, let's get with it. Now, I can't just plug infinity straight into these because then I'm just going to get infinity over infinity because... Big numbers in this one is just going to make this infinity. Big numbers in this one is just going to make this infinity, right? Because that's a square root function. Uh, big numbers in this one, actually, no, wait. This doesn't go to infinity because that's a negative exponent. Okay, so this one goes to zero, but that's infinity. And this one right here goes to infinity. That one right there goes to infinity. So we got a lot of infinities going on here. We need to manipulate this a little bit so we stop with the infinities. So we have 3x to the 7 over 2 minus 7x to the negative 1 half all over um, x, oh, it's supposed to be plus, thank you, uh, x uh, raised to the second power minus x to the one-half power. Now, one might think, oh, we just, we just always multiply it by the highest exponent, like the inverse of it. So you think, oh, okay, so I just go like this, and I go x to the negative 7 over 2, and this is x to the negative 7 over 2. Okay, did anybody think that? You're like, oh, yeah, that's what we do? Yes, okay, let's try it. So if I multiply this to the top, don't forget you're distributing. You have to multiply it to that one and that one. And the same with the bottom. You have to multiply it to that term and that term. So we're distributing. So the first one is going to be 3x to the 0 power, right? Because it would be 7 over 2 plus negative 7 over 2. Then I'm going to have plus 7. And that's a negative 1 half. And so we're going to get x to the negative 8 over 2, which uh, is not, it simplifies to negative 4, right? And so on the bottom, I'm going to have, oh, man, we don't have common denominators. Let's make common denominators. We have uh, 2 right there. That means that's going to be a 4. So we have 4 over 2, and that one has a common denominator. Okay. So what is 4 over 2 plus negative 7 over 2? Negative 3 over 2. Okay. And then we have minus, and this is going to be x to the negative 6 over 2. But what is negative 6 over 2? Negative 3. Okay. What's that? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, not indeterminate, but undefined. Because, see, check this out. If I write this out again, so x to the 0 power is 1, so this doesn't really do anything. So we have a plus, and we have 7. 7 over x to the positive 4 divided by 
1 over x to the positive 3 over 2, positive, and then minus uh, 1 over x to the third. Okay, so um, if I take these variables to infinity, this goes to 0, this goes to 0, and this goes to 0, based on what we won't know about 1 over x, right? And so we're left with 3 divided by 0. Now, that's undefined. That doesn't tell us anything. So doing what we did right here doesn't work. So what else can we do? Is the second highest one? Let's try it. Okay, I'm going to shrink this up a little bit and then continue on. Look at that. Okay, and then we have, okay, let's rewrite it. 3x to the 7 over 2 minus 7x to the, oh, they did it again, negative. Okay, and on the bottom we have x squared uh, minus x to the 1 half. Now, the other idea, the other thinking is, what if I just, um, what if I uh, get rid of the variables on the denominator? Okay, so if I look at that denominator, the highest degree is 2. And so if I get rid of that one, I would multiply this by x to the negative 2. And multiply this one by x to the negative 2. Distribute, just like we did before. So now we're going to get 3. Um, oh, we need um, common denominators here. That's a 7, right? 7 over 2. So if I make this, uh, that would be negative 4. So negative 4 plus 7 is going to be... 3 over 2, right? Oh, don't forget my x. And then plus 7x to the negative 5 over 2, right? Right? Am I adding right? Yeah, okay. And then I have, on the bottom, I have x to the 0, and then I have x to the negative 1 and 1 half, whatever. We'll leave it as a mixed number. So now we have negative exponent for this one, negative exponent for this one. What do we learn over here when we have negative exponents? They go to... They go to 0, right? So those negative exponents are going to go to 0. So this guy goes to 0, and this guy goes to 0. So what am I left with? I'm left with, on the bottom, 1, right? Because zero to the, or x to the 0 power is always 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. And then on the top, we have a 3x to the 3 over 2. Now, don't forget what we're doing. We're taking the limit as x approaches infinity. So if I take this to infinity, the top just gets ginormous, right? Dividing by 1, so we get infinity divided by 1, which means our limit is infinity.